As newlyweds, we were the classic model of nuptial bliss. I worked hard all day, designing gadgets and gizmos for the good of the human race. I'd come home and find my lab coats neatly laundered and a steaming plate of the finest in 22nd century microwave cuisine awaiting me. This was happiness. But it's hardly the stuff of dramatic conflict and hilarious quips and put-downs, is it? This is what's funny in the year 2112. We'd be married for a year when she reached the zenith of domestic goddessery. She just got too fast, and in newfound spare time she switched on the TV and that's when it hit her. A new special on the continuing threat of nuclear war. We could all be wiped out in the blink of an Arab's eye. From that moment on she no longer cooked, no longer cleaned. She didn't see the point. Instead, she just sat on her ass, watching infomercials and old Dutch cycling movies from the 1950s. The plates piled up, the underpants rotted and collapsed in on themselves. You know what it's like, fellas. You get home from a hard day at the lab to find your car's been raped by a Muslim and the only thing your bitch wife has cooked is her eyeballs. Sometimes I wish they'd just been drunk. Sometimes I wish At first, I shouted, you're no wife. Science has proved that shouting abuse at subordinates gets things done. But my hungry breath was nothing against the threat of atomic apocalypse. Then I taped her crazy soothsayings and played them back to her. But it made no difference. My dear patient, won't you even consider euthanasia? Finally, I gave in to the inevitable, exploiting my own noble gift in order to reassure her. I reinforced our flat against nuclear attack, ensuring blast resistance. Every wall triple sealed with the most sophisticated materials embezzled government research funds can buy. It worked. Reassured she returned to her old agenda of serving my every husbandly need. I was a satisfied man, top, middle and bottom. She wanted to go further. She went out to fetch me the latest, choicest wines and cheeses to accompany my microwave feasts. But disaster struck. While she was out shopping, the Belgians dropped the A-bomb. It was over in seconds, utter nuclear devastation. Wifey ducked the initial blast, clever girl. But radiation sickness is a killer, and we've got no cure for this designer disease. I moped and I mourned for a while. I binged on what little alcohol and opium we'd stocked up in case we should be forced to endure a tough nuclear winter buried in our triple glazed hovel. And then I got on with what I do. I took apart the microwave, I disassembled the fridge freezer and disemboweled the flat's plumbing system. I stripped down the now useless television piece by piece. I designed, I planned, I built, fusing, welding and programming. I already had her voice. I used the pipes for her innards, the television for her senses and the microwave for her brain. I even added a few extra touches, you know, for sex appeal. The finer details, the texture of her most delicate parts, I achieved through a combination of synthetic fibres from the sofa on which she'd slop for weeks, and houseplants that it nearly burst my scientific mind to genetically alter. Finally, I had her back, as good as ever. Your lasagna will be ready in three seconds. Beep, beep, beep. Oh my god, it's a fucking mess. Shit, I love science.